Let's start with a question. This lump of clay sinks in the water. But if we shape it into a boat, it floats. Why does this happen? Stick till the end of this video to find out the answer. I'm Chani and you're watching The Art of Science. When an object is put in a fluid like water, two forces come into action. One, gravity pulls the object downwards. But there's another force that pushes the object upwards. And this force is called the buoyant force. This upthrust or buoyant force depends on density. Check out this video on our channel to understand what density is. It is simply put the amount of mass in a given volume. If the density of an object is more than the density of the fluid, it will sink. But if the density of an object is less than the density of the fluid, it will float. Just like this egg. When we add salt to water, the water becomes denser than the egg, which results in the egg floating. In an ideal case, water mixed with a little milk is less dense than the egg, which means the egg will sink. And thirdly, on keeping the salt water below and adding a layer of clear water on top, the egg floats in the salt water but sinks in the clear water, resulting in the egg to float somewhere in the middle. Why don't you take advantage of this buoyant force and try dropping an egg from as high as 16 feet? I have linked the full DIY video up here and in the description box as well. When we drop this carton, on hitting the ground, the water bounces upwards. The egg experiences a downward force due to gravity, but also an upward force due to buoyancy and the bouncing of the water. These forces cancel each other out and save the egg from breaking. Why confine to fluids when you can actually show the buoyant force using solids too? Like rice. When we vibrate rice grains, we set them in constant motion, like the relatively free molecules in fluids. This results in rice acting like a fluid. Now since the hollow ping pong ball is less dense than the rice acting as the fluid, it floats on top. And the denser metal ball sinks down. Before we move ahead and answer the boat question, why don't you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. Coming back to the question we started with, buoyancy doesn't only depend on the density of the object alone, but also the overall density. In this case, the space occupied by the lump of clay is less, resulting in a higher density. But when we mold it into a boat, while the weight of the clay remains the same, the space occupied increases, which decreases the density. Since the boat is hollow from inside, a major portion of this boat shape is filled with air. So the total weight of the system also includes the weight of the air. The combination of clay and air across the larger volume decreases the overall density of the boat, resulting in flotation. If you have any doubts, let us know in the comments below and we'll see you next week.